agriculture. It's the economic engine that drives this region. On this episode of Valley's Gold, we're exploring ag education throughout the valley, from future farmers to those consumers who enjoy our products. So join me, Ryan Jacobson, as we enter the Valley's classroom. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by... Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Guard Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the Valley home. I'm at the Fresno County Farm and Nutrition Day, and with me I have Katie Rogers, my colleague over at the Fresno County Farm Bureau. Hi, Ryan. Katie, you're gonna tell me all about this wonderful day. That's right. Well, uh, Farm and Nutrition Day started back in 2006, and it's grown a little bit each year. This year we have 3,400 students from throughout Fresno County who are involved in the event. Third grade is when students learn about their county. And in Fresno County, agriculture is such a huge part of our county, it was a natural fit for this event to be targeted at third graders. Our sponsors are a huge part of this. Um, we tried to help with transportation reimbursements for the, the participating schools and without those sponsors we couldn't make that happen. Additionally, we have over 50 presenters and they're, they have booths, they're, they're presenting different demonstrations, they're handing out samples in our tasting center, and then over 60 volunteers that are here making sure that the kids and the teachers and chaperones are going where they're supposed to go. And I know the booze, it concentrates everything from water conservation to the types of products that we have here. I saw a lot of dairy focused ones. Tell me about some of the others that you've seen. Sure, um, we have um, UC Cooperative Extension from Fresno County is involved with it. We have the Ag Commissioner's Office. Anybody involved in agriculture or nutrition, we want them involved here. So we have a, a variety of booths. Um, we also have lettuce planting, so the kids are getting some hands-on learning while they're here as well. And then we also have the demonstrations where they physically get to see uh, something in progress. Talk, talk to me about that. Sure, yeah, this year we have our milking demonstration. We have uh, Dairy Council brings their mobile dairy classroom, so they have a dairy cow and a, a calf. We also have sheepdogs demonstration and a horse demonstration. So kids are learning about how um, in agriculture, there's so many different components. And it's a lot about feeling, you know, touching, but we also get to taste the products here on Farm Fresno County Farm Nutrition Day. That's right. In the tasting center, we, we try to include some, um, some products that the kids may not have tasted before. Fresno County, we're producing most of the, the country's raisins. So a lot of kids, even though that's the case, haven't tried raisins before. So they're trying that in the tasting center. We have some peach pops. We have, this year we have olives. We have some dairy products, nuts. Just try to in, introduce them to some products that they may not have tried in the past. 
Well, Katie, thanks for joining me. It's an awesome event that both of us have been involved with for quite some time. And again, just the exposure that these kids get to agriculture is an invaluable experience for them. That's great. Thanks for having me. Thanks. I'm at the Selen Arena in downtown Fresno, and with me I have some special guests from the FFA program. With me I have the San Joaquin Region Advisor, Charles Parker. I have Emily Gambrill and Deepak Kumar. Thank you guys all for joining me. Well, I want to start with you, Charles. Can you give me a history of what the FFA program is and what it means to California? Agricultural education actually started in California pre-1900. So we had ag teachers back that early. In 1928, they actually started the FFA program. Well, we now in ag education get our chances to have the students take and learn something in the classroom. They go outside, they travel, they meet other folks, they get to talk about their experiences, they get to go to career development events and compete against other folks and share what they've learned. And, and the students are more engaged in the agriculture industry and so they're more productive both there and in college, they find out they're getting there. Well, I know it's all about the hands-on experience. I mean, these students actually get to physically touch and feel what they're doing, and that's just a huge component of this whole program. It is, and that's the fun part of it, is the students go out there, whether it's plant science and they're going out and, and testing or, or doing cuttings, or animal science and they're actually dissecting things, or whether it's in, in mechanics where they're actually constructing projects and designing them themselves. Wow, okay, and I want to jump over to the students, Emily and Deepak. Talk to me, first off, where are you from? Which high school? Why did you get involved in the FFA program? And a little bit of about your background. Emily, go ahead. Well, I'm from Clovis FFA at Clovis East High School. My uh, background in agriculture is my dad's an agriculture teacher at my high school in my program. And he got me involved in that my freshman year and I just fell in love with it. I breed and show market lambs and I judge livestock competitively across the state of California. Well, fantastic. And Deepak, go ahead and yours. I'm actually not from an agricultural background. Both my parents are doctors and they're immigrants from India. So the whole story of how I got into FFA is quite interesting. My eighth grade teacher was the wife of one of the local ag teachers and she convinced my mom to go ahead and enroll me. So I started and they trapped me. Well, great. And there's a very specific reason why we're here at the Selen Arena. Please talk about that, Charles. Well, each year uh, we have our, what we call our state leadership conference uh, located here, calling us our home. And so about 5,000 individuals will be in Fresno this week uh, partaking in, in leadership development events uh, like extemporaneous speaking, a prepared speaking, job interview. Uh, they'll also be doing parliamentary procedure and then also being doing career development events such as agri science fair, um, marketing plans, uh, ag issues, ag sales, different activities they're going to partake in. And then the convention itself is ran by the students. Uh, the student state officers will put on the convention, uh, giving their addresses and performing in front of the 5,000 students. Uh, they will announce the six new state officers that will take a year out of college and, uh, and travel and serve as ambassadors for agriculture education as, a, as state FFA officers. I want to jump over to Deepak. Talk about what is your most memorable experience going through the FFA program? My most memorable experience would have to be um, this last February and this last year serving as the San Joaquin Regional President. I know Mr. Parker alluded to it earlier. Um, one of the jobs of the regional team is to go ahead and uh, it kind of ensure that the next team that takes place is willing to um, and able to serve the region's needs. FFA is continuous, it's yeah. a circle. So whoever goes through the program has to make sure that if it's not the same, it's better for the people that come after it. Yeah, absolutely. And Emily, your most memorable experience? Uh, my most memorable experience was the San Joaquin Region FFA Boot Camp this last year that Deepak and I and the rest of our team had the opportunity to plan and facilitate for students. We got to see all of our hard work that we've done throughout the conference come together and see them all grow not only as teams in the FFA, but really as families, because that's what we are. Yeah, you, know, you guys get to pretty close together for that full year that you guys serve mm -hmm. as the officers. Mm -hmm. And Charles, what does the FFA acronym stand for? Uh, our students continually to follow themselves as the future farmers of America. But it's not, again, production agriculture oriented. It's about the all phases of agriculture, the scientific aspects of it, the business aspects of it. It takes and encompasses it all, but we're also very proud of our roots. I mean, the future's in great hands because of folks like you and the FFA program and what it does for the future of agriculture and our industry. So thank you guys for joining me. Thank you. Okay. I've headed on over to Fresno State to learn about the FFA field days. With me I have Dr. Stephen Roca and Jody Rayleigh. Thanks for joining me guys. Thanks for having us. Well, Dr. Roca, I want to start with you. Give me an overview of what the FFA field days are. Sure. Our FFA field days, this is actually our 65th. 
Uh, we'll have uh, uh, 33 different contests that are going to take place this year, including our April Field Day, which will have 29 of those contests. Uh, 19 of them will be crowning our state finalists and champions. Wow, and Jody, you're a student here who participates in this. Talk about what the students here at Fresno State and how they participate in these field day activities. So I'm part of a committee called the FFA Field Day Committee where over 20 students um, assist in hosting and running the field day contest that Dr. Rocco was explaining. This could be anywhere from public relations work to awards <laughs> or basic operations. So we get a good handle on event planning and being able to run a successful field day contest for so many students. On an annual basis, Fresno State draws 3 thousand students to our campus uh, to participate in field day based events and this is from 172 schools from Tule Lake on the Oregon border to Calexico on the Mexico border and so we draw a wide range of students and it's a great tool to bring in students for the Jordan College of Agriculture. And Dr. Roker from these competitions typically you'll have a winner. What happens to the winner? What's the next stage for them? Uh, for, for 19 of these contests uh, we'll be crowning the state champions and so those state champions will then qualify to go on to the national contest which is put on by the national FFA, FFA organization. And Dr. Roker, talk about how these field days prep these students for after high school. Uh, programs like this, these career development events, uh, they're really essential. As a former high school teacher myself, um, I got to witness firsthand how these programs in, in some ways really kind of save some of our students. Uh, those that get frustrated with a lot of the general education type of courses, uh, a course in agriculture uh, is one they can, they can really kind of kind of get involved in and see the relevance of. Uh, for example, I had a student who uh, first day of school actually got suspended for getting in a fight and was really having a tough time as a freshman. Uh, we got him involved in the, in the FFA program in our ag, in our ag education uh, coursework and through our ag mechanics team, uh, this young man went, went on from being you know, a troubled freshman to uh, one of our uh, a very competitive senior in our ag mechanics team and uh, then went on to become a welder and have his own business and now, now works out there in welds. So well, doing, that's he's doing great. That's incredible and I'm sure we've all heard those FFA stories and what those blue jackets represent long term for those students. So I want to thank you so much Jody and Dr. Roca for sharing this with me and uh, I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to do this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for coming. The 4-H green hats, ties, and scarves have become synonymous with youth leadership development. With me I have John Borba of the Kern County 4-H program. John, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Well, John, I want to begin with, how did you get interested or involved in the 4-H program? Well, I was actually a 4-H member many years ago in Tulare County. I grew up in the program, and uh, after going to college and getting involved in the work field, I decided when the opportunity came for me to become a 4-H professional, I selected to take part in that. And I'm a very proud 4-H member. I actually participated a long time, fourth grade all the way through my college, early college years. And actually I was in the beef, rocketry, and sugar beet program. So that's kind of my claim to fame back in the days when I was in grammar school there. So very, very proud of my involvement in 4-H. And when we think of 4-H, I mean, it is so much more than just those proje projects. I mean, really there's so many leadership opportunities for these kids. Correct. 4-H uh, has an emphasis on citizenship, leadership and learning life skills, much like the projects you participated in when you were a youth that taught you valuable life skills, whether it was dealing with an animal or raising a crop responsibility. Uh, and we also uh, uh, encourage the youth to take on leadership responsibilities where the older youth become mentors to the younger youth. How many uh, kids, and when you look at the state of California, how many kids participate in the 4-H program? Uh, currently, there's over 120,000 youth participating with 14,000 adult volunteers who serve as mentors and leaders to those youth. And when we talk about the program, I mean, we really see it up and down the state. It's not just for rural kids, it's for urban kids too. There's a lot of different kids that participate in this program. Here in the San Joaquin Valley, 4-H uh, uh, has a lot of what's called the traditional mode, which are the 4-H clubs, which you might have been identified with, where volunteer leaders assist the youth in learning the different uh, uh, projects that they're involved in. We have programs that involve military bases, active duty, and National Guard. We also have programs that are after school programs where we actually do uh, programs for after school functions or we train the staff of after school in 4-H to uh, provide 4-H programs to after school youth. Well that's neat. And John, for kids that are interested, where should the parents contact? They can contact their local University of California Cooperative Extension office and uh, ask for the 4-H staff. Great, and we actually are going to throw the link up on the screen so they can see where to actually go online and learn more about the program. Great. 
So John, I want to thank you so much for telling me about this very important program that I think we're all aware of, but we just don't know the intricacies of how involved the 4-H program is up and down the state. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. I've headed over to the Garden of the Sun, and with me I have Shannon Mueller with the University of California Cooperative Extension. Shannon, thanks for joining me. Oh great, I'm pleased to be here. Now you're the director of the Fresno and Madera County Cooperative Extensions, correct? That's correct. And you're going to tell me a little bit about what the Cooperative Extension is and its relationship to agriculture. Right, and we're celebrating our centennial yeah. this year, and so we've really enjoyed looking back at the, the development of Cooperative Extension. Yeah. We're the bridge between the information that's developed on campus and we bring that out to the local growers, but it really is a two-way street. And so a lot of the issues and some of the things that the growers are dealing with, then we take that information back to the campuses in order to draw attention to what's going on in our local county. The one thing about Cooperative Extension today is you guys have so many different facets. Obviously the ones I interact a lot with on the agricultural, productive agricultural side is the farm advisors. What exactly is a farm advisor and, and what's the role? So the farm advisors bring the research-based information from the campuses to the counties to work with farmers and ranchers, and a lot of times we just can't directly yeah. import that. And so we will do um, work to sort of adapt that research so it's locally relevant. And we do research trials, uh, demonstration trials and plots. We have field days, workshops, meetings. So our goal is to really bring the most up-to-date information to the growers. Um, varieties, production practices, irrigation, pest management, just you know any component that relates to agriculture to make sure that we keep our ag economy strong. I think an incredible role you guys play is the nutrition programs you have for particularly school children. Right, we have really one of the premier nutrition programs in Cooperative Extension here in Fresno County and they conduct uh, trainings in the school so they'll go out and visit classrooms and talk about good nutrition, physical activity, health issues and they one of the fun activities they do is the monthly tasting time and so they will bring um, some product for the kids to taste in sort of a comfortable environment so all the kids are tasting maybe jicama or apricots or something new that they might not have tried before in the hopes that they'll try it they'll like it and they'll go home and they'll ask their parents to purchase these things at the grocery store and then the, I want to wrap up with is that we're here in the setting gorgeous setting of Garden of the Sun and talk about what this garden does and its uh, relationship to the Master Gardeners program that the Cooperative Extension runs. Right, our Master Gardeners work with our more of our urban clientele and so they'll work with our home gardeners and landscape people. This Garden of the Sun was developed um, by the Master Gardener program and we started with a bare piece of land. <laughs> so we had one tree and a bare <laughs> plot of land and it's developed over time into this gorgeous research and demonstration garden. Well, great, Shannon. Thank you so much. Very informative about the UC Cooperative Extension and the important role it plays in our valley agriculture. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. For children throughout the state, the California Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom plays a vital role in learning about their local agricultural industry. With me, I have Executive Director Judy Culbertson. Judy, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Well, first off, let's begin with the history and what is the Ag in the Classroom? The Ag in the Classroom program is an effort statewide and nationally to educate our youth about where their food comes from so that they can see the importance of it throughout the state. We develop resources. We um, pull together resources from other organizations. We have state training conferences for teachers so that we can make it as easy as possible for a teacher to be able to learn about agriculture and then ultimately share it with their students. What are the main grades that Ag in the Classroom covers? Uh, we really cover K through 12. Uh, in high school it's a little bit more challenging as we're subject specific, but we do have resources, especially in the STEM area, science, technology, engineering, and math. We have a lot of resources that can help students see what careers are available in all of those areas and they all relate back to agriculture. One of our primary programs is our story writing contest aimed for grades three through eight. And we, this last year we had about 8,000 students throughout the state write stories. They are judged and we award six winning students with a trip to Sacramento and a lot of other great things including an e-reader and um, we provide those stories to art students at the high school level and they illustrate the stories and we develop a book which is then available to anybody throughout. 
And uh, this really causes students to do research and think about agriculture. And you know, we need to really focus on the areas that the schools are encouraging their teachers to use. So nutrition has been huge. And what is more basic than growing your own food, perhaps in a school garden, or even just exploring the, the fruits and vegetables that you eat. And Judy, somebody that wants to get involved in this wonderful program, what do they do? Go online at learnaboutag.org. Everything that we have is, uh, is free on the internet. Well, Judy, I can't thank you enough. Thank you for letting me learn about this fabulous program. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm at Chichancy Park, home of the Fresno Grizzlies, and with me I have Mona Cummings of Central California Farm Grown Program. Mona, thanks for joining me. It's my pleasure to be here today. Now I am wondering why am I at a baseball park talking about farm grown? That's a good question. We started the Central California Farm Grown Program about two and a half years ago, and with the objective being to raise and promote agriculture, the agricultural heritage of the valley, while also uh, serving to support our education and healthy living programs through the Grizzlies Community Fund. Uh, probably the pivotal program within Farm Grown is the Wild About Reading program, which is 11 years old. Wow. And it serves five different counties uh, throughout the Central Valley. And we promote literacy and agriculture, working in 175 different schools um, and serving 100,000 students in total every year. And the intent is, I think, if the kids read a certain amount of books, they actually get a free ticket to the baseball game here. They do. If they read 10 books within five weeks with the support of their teachers and their families, then they're able to come to the ballpark as our guests during the summer. I know the years 2013, 2014 are very exciting for you because the program's really expanding now. you got some additions here at the ballpark that are really exciting. Mm -hmm. We've actually planted grapevines and we have uh, different sorts of trees like nuts and fruits and, and we have the community garden that's been implemented by Acel High School. And Mona, please tell me about the Farm Gone Fridays that you guys do here. Well, every Friday night when we have a Grizzlies home game, we host Farm Grown Fridays and that has a farmer's market on the concourse so people can meander around and try different seasonal produce and different agricultural products. But at 4.30 p.m. on Farm Grown Fridays, we invite um, our ticket holders to come out and to, partici to participate in Farm Forum. And Farm Forum has different topics that we cover. The topics change depending on the Friday. Well, that's incredible. Like I said, we come to the fun of the baseball game, but at the same time, folks get to be exposed to our very important agriculture industry here. Absolutely. And the Fresno Grizzlies are proud to be supporters of agriculture in the Valley, and we're happy to also promote um, our America's favorite pastime. Well, great, Mona. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Education is at the heart of what we do here at Valley's Gold. To discuss the curriculum we have associated with the program, I have Amy Osterberg, the Project Coordinator of Education Through Agriculture. Amy, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Ryan. Amy, how did you get associated with the program? Ryan, I got associated with the program by being involved in agriculture when I was little. I always had a passion for it. I grew up doing 4-H and FFA, and then I went to school to become a teacher, and I taught for 12 years. I taught first grade and a one-two combo and did a reading intervention program. And then recently I just completed my master's degree. But the exciting part is, is that my master's project focused on how ag in the classroom can motivate reading. And so through that, doing my research, I was able to meet some amazing people. And with the help of some generous sponsors, Gar Tatilian and Brandt, this opportunity and this amazing job was created for me. And what exactly is Education Through Agriculture? Education Through Agriculture is a resource for teachers and parents to learn more about agriculture, basically to help foster an awareness for kids and families about where their food and fiber comes from. And really the intent is, is to take the episodes of Valley's Gold and really break them down so that there's the curriculum associated with what individuals are learning from the episodes. Yes, correct. So we have activities that go with the episode and then some of the segments are broken up into different sections. So if a teacher just wants to watch a certain section on beekeeping, then they can focus on that and then have activities to go with it so the kids can have a writing response to go with it. On the website, there's places for teachers and parents to go to where they can access free downloadable resources. There's also links for field trip activities, different events that are celebrating agriculture in our area. And then there is curriculum to go with whatever episode is focused on that week. And Amy, how do you access this information? 
it's very easy, um, very easy for teachers and parents. You can just go to valleysgold.org, and there there will be a link for you to access the education website. Well, I am so excited about this partnership that we have, and we're going to be able to teach a whole lot of other students out there about the importance of our local agricultural industry. It's very exciting. Thank well, you, Ryan. Thank you, Amy. Valley's Gold is produced for partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by... Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the Valley home.